What's going on, y'all? This be your boy Scotty by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new episode of Yes for the Mess, where we talk about celebrity gossip, hot topics, and all things reality TV based. I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful Tuesday, and I intend on doing the exact same. What's going on, y'all? Now, before we get into today's mess, let's talk about what we got coming up. The Boss Babe Awards is coming up, coming up on April the 28th, and it will be held in Atlanta, Georgia. Be sure to vote for those that you see on the screen. You have Scotty by Nature TV, Jamar 84, Bundy Blue, House of Aaron, Undario, as well as the Chasing Reality platform. This is the last week to get your votes in, so make sure you guys vote, 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 vote. You can only vote once per device, so make sure you get it in. March the 1st is the last day to vote. So like I said, once again, go ahead and get your vote in. If you have not voted yet, the link will be down below in my description box right underneath all of my social media platforms, okay? So with that being said, that's pretty much all that we got for the church announcements. So let's go ahead and get into the mess for today, all right? And we're going to start off with Miss Latoya Lucky. Now, she did an interview um, not too long ago, and she was basically speaking on people constantly bringing up Beyonce during her interviews, okay? And I got this from the neighbor, not the neighborhood talk, but I really got this from Hollywood Unlocked, and I think they got it from Black America Web. So right now, we're going to get into what Latoya had to say, and then we're going to give our opinions and move on to the next. So let's get into it, y'all. Ask you something. Let me just start and say, yeah, Latoya... Uh, Beyonce. Right. And now it's a whole, it changes the whole tone of right. things. Do you feel like because you are part of such an iconic group that people are going to some kind of way ease something into it? They're going to ask you something that, you know, just people just still just nosy because they don't know about B and her stuff? Absolutely. Every, I mean, I'm, I think every interview, including this one, look at that. Um, I, I expect it. I don't take offense to it because nothing about that situation offends me. I'm happy um, and in an amazing space in my life. And so are all of us, all the girls, all the ladies of Destiny's Child, you guys. We've seen so many people walk. It's all recently, we were together. We came together for the first time ever. It was a beautiful experience, y'all. Listen, the hug, the prayer, the things, like it was- Why wouldn't it be? Because people, I think, always felt like we were at each other's throat. And it was really, no, nah, we were really just all working on ourselves right. and growing. And we all kept going in our careers, thankfully. And I'm just, I'm happy for each and every one of them. All their success, everything they're doing, to see them as moms and wives. Like, we're adults. Right. We were 18. Were we 17? 17 or 18. It's all recently we were together. We came together. And that was Latoya looking on Black America Web, where they were asking her how does she feel about constantly having questions asked to her about Beyonce. And I thought that was a very gracious answer. Um, I think that she's, I, I don't I don't think that Latoya really has an issue with being asked about Beyonce, but I did like the fact that she pointed out the irony of him asking her about, uh, asking her about getting asked about Beyonce. But this is what I say. Um, I will say that it is kind of annoying and it's kind of like a slap in the face. Anytime a person that was once a part of Destiny's Child constantly gets questioned about Beyonce. Beyonce doesn't really do many interviews like that, but at the same point in time, if Beyonce is doing an interview, do you think they're going to ask her about any of them girls? Absolutely not. They're not going to ask her nothing about them girls. So why can't people give, you know, the Kelly Rollins and the Latoya Luckett's and the Michelle Williams of the world that same damn respect? Like I saw Kelly Rowland not too long ago. You know, we talked about that where she was doing an interview with Big Tig and all of them. And they just kept trying to ask her about Beyonce. And that shit is annoying. Like, Stop bombarding them with questions about Beyonce. We understand that Beyonce is probably one of the biggest artists of our time. She was the biggest artist that came out of Destiny's Child. She is that girl. We get that. But these women have other things that we can discuss outside of Beyonce. They have their own careers. They have their own music. They have their own movies. They 
they have their own businesses. They have other things that they're probably there to promote. But all you guys want to do is ask these lazy ass questions about Beyonce. And I don't think that that's right. Latoya is successful in her own right. OK, um, she she's successful as a musician. She's successful as an actress. She's successful within her own right. So why does she always have to live in the shadows of the likes of a Beyonce? And this ain't even no disrespect to Beyonce, because I know that when some people probably see this video, they'll probably think that this is all about being a Beyonce hater and things like that. And that's not even the case here. What I'm saying is let these women be in their own light. Stop putting a shadow on them that is Beyonce. That's not fair to them. Like they didn't went through that their entire lives already having to deal with this whole notion of these girls ain't shit without Beyonce. Like that that's that's annoying. And if I was in their shoes, I would feel the exact same way. I can only imagine being a part of a group and you've worked so hard to separate yourself from that. And of course, being a part of Destiny Child. It's definitely a part of Latoya's past. That's her beginning. Uh, uh, you know, of course, that's how we found out about her. That's how we met her. I understand. But she's no longer in their place anymore. She's no longer in their group anymore. Like, stop asking her questions about Beyonce. Stop asking her questions about Destiny's Child. She's worth more than Beyonce and Destiny's Child. Like, let's talk about her music. Let's talk about her catalog. Let's talk about the things that she's accomplished outside of that group okay why don't we talk about how great her debut album was and how successful it was it was a number one album why don't we talk about that why don't we talk about how huge torn was for her you know why not talk about that why not talk about how you know how great lady love was one of the probably one of the best albums of 2009 why don't we talk about that why don't we talk about how she came out with um uh, back to life the back to life album and how great it was as an independent release why don't we talk about that why don't we talk about her roles on you know single ladies or her roles on second generation wayne's or her role on greenly why don't we talk about things like that, or her role on The Preacher's Kid. Why don't we talk about that? You know, <clears throat> I wouldn't want to be questioned about something that is from my past all the damn time. Like, I understand sometimes we got to ask those questions, you know, how life was when you was in Destiny. Like, I understand that. But constantly asking me the same damn thing in every fucking interview is kind of sideway disrespectful. So we need to move on with that. Love Latoya Luckett. And um, I know that she expects the questions, but that doesn't make it right, though. Like, I get expected all day, but hey, I'll put your foot down and say, go in these interviews and say, don't ask me shit about Beyonce and Destiny's Child. Let's make this about me. This is my interview, not theirs, Okay. So that's all I got on Latoya. So let's move on to the very next one. We're going to Drake. So Drake, once again, you know, posted in another nigga hood like a bad bitch. You know, he's on social media um, in, in, in solidarity with the likes of, you know, Tory Lanez, honey. He put on his um, Instagram story, free you, basically, in so many words. He wants um, Tory Lanez out of the slammer. My thing about it is... Um, I don't understand what Megan ever did to Drake. You know, he goes out of his way to shade her. He dissed her in the record and everybody wants to play obtuse and act like he didn't diss her in the song before when he absolutely did. Um, he's standing in solidarity with Tory Lanez and I, I find that to be comical. You know, Drake wants to be a bad, you know, Drake wants to be a hood nigga so bad, but he really a bad bitch. That's what he really is. And a lot of these men that support Tory Lanez are all bad bitches, but they don't really realize how bad of a bitch they really are. Um, I think that it's crazy how they support him. They really do support Tory and it's so crazy how, you know, the women in the industry that be maligned by these men gets dragged, but these men support these same men <laughs> that cause harm to these women. It's just like R. Kelly. I, I think I said this before, just like R. Kelly, how he disrespected and, you know, 
sexualize those women, those teenage girls. And he's the one that gets the sympathy, but the women don't. They all drag the women. It's they was looking for a check. They was looking for money. They was looking for this. And they knew what was going down when they did it and all this other shit. They they all say that. Everybody says that about these women. But when it comes down to these men, they get all this support. And I never understand why. My thing is that if Tory. And I always ask the same question. If Tory really did not shoot Megan, why didn't he say that on the stand? If Kelsey was the one that really caused bodily harm to Megan, why didn't he say that on the stand? But people want to say, well, he ain't no snitch. Well, if he ain't no snitch and he decided not to snitch on, not to snitch on Kelsey and shit like that, then why the hell should I feel sorry for him because he went to jail for somebody else? Why the fuck am I feeling sorry for him? I don't give a fuck about Tory. Fuck Tory and everybody else that stands by him. Because, like, if, if I bet, do y'all go visit Tory in jail? Y'all support him so much. Y'all want to write letters and shit, but do y'all go support him? Do you cash out for him? Do you give him commissary? Do you green dot him? Do you, do you write letters? Do you schedule conjugal visits? Do you do any of that? That's what I'm trying to understand. Y'all go up for Tory. These niggas in this damn industry, they go up for Tory. And then every time somebody supports Tory, the first thing that people want to say is, oh, they know something in the industry that everybody else don't know about. Yeah. Yeah. They know that Tory is a violent mother. They know he's known to put his hands on people and all that shit. They know that, but they still support him. They still support him. In the midst of the trial, he put his hands on sick ass um, August Alcina for no reason because he didn't want to dap him. But y'all find it hard to believe that he put a bullet in her foot. It doesn't make sense. I don't know. I don't. I don't understand what everybody's fascination is with Tory Lanez, and what's so crazy about it is that Tory Lanez's career wasn't even that hot. Like I said this multiple times, the only song that I know by Tory Lanez is the record that he did. And it was a sample, like the first song that he did. And I actually like that song. It was the sample of Brownstone's If You Love Me. I think it went like, you got to do more than just say it. And then when they ask me, do it. When they're going to hide. You know, I don't know if he's a singer or a rapper. But that's the only record that I know. And that's the only record that I like by him. So I don't know. Uh. People make it sound like he was just, you know, Megan came along and fucked up his career, but he was never like no big artist to begin with in my eyes. And when I said that on Twitter, everybody attacked my damn mentions. But I said what the fuck I said. He was never that damn in the, in the like he was never that damn important to the game like that. Y'all made him important because y'all don't like me, and that's just what it is. So fuck Tory and fuck Drake with his fake ass accents, fake ass gangsters, cosplay, all that bullshit he do. Fuck Drake. I don't see the I don't see the appeal of his ass either. Let's move on to the next thing. So, as you all know, there was the Wendy Williams documentary. I I watched the first part and I I took notes and everything, and I did intend on like doing a review on it, but I just couldn't. Like I couldn't finish it. It's just it's something um, about it that gives exploiting about it. Like, I just don't think that we should have been watching her in those moments. Like, you know, she it's clear something is wrong with her. She's not well. It's clear. I just didn't feel comfortable. Like, I tried. And I get that everybody was talking about it. And, of course, that could have been, you know, a check. But I couldn't watch that shit. It's just something about it. I just couldn't really get, I couldn't wrap my mind around it. I really couldn't get into it. And I, it just feels like all the people that she hired to be around her and stuff like that, it just, they all, it just seemed like everybody is in it for their own damn agendas. Like they're not really genuine about, you know, looking out for Wendy and things like that. Like, you know, uh, that manager will, you know, he don't seem like he's, 
you know, really interested in her well-being at all. He's just interested in the check. That's how it comes across to me. And then, you know, the family members is a, is a part of this and they didn't know certain things. And now they're looking like they're, they looking like they out for the money too. Like some people think that they're out for the money as well. And I, and I, and I really don't believe that her son is, and I don't really believe that the niece is, nor do I believe that the nephew really is either. But I just, I don't know. It's just, I, I, I don't feel right about that documentary and it doesn't, look too good and let me address something else i do think that people should give a little bit of sympathy to miss wendy i do feel like that because yes she used to spill the tea and she was a big ass gossip and she was messy as hell we all know that and that was that's that was her job that's what she got paid to do i hate how people are saying that this is her karma i don't think that no one really deserves this you know, I don't think that's her karma. I think that's just the cards that she was dealt. I just think that it's kind of disgusting for people to say that her being sick is a way of karma for her. I, I, I don't, and I'm not Wendy's biggest fan at all, but I don't think that that's cool. I don't think that that's right. I do have some form. I do have a piece of a heart. I do. But I, I just think that it's kind of fucked up that people are saying that. However, Kevin Hunter, Wendy's ex-husband, came out and he said some things about the documentary and stuff like that. And he put, you know, um, Wendy's sister on blast. And this is what he said. Okay, so everyone heard Kevin through the docuseries. No problem. The show took pre precedent over everything, including family. What I guess they left out was that while she was in Florida getting recovery three years ago, there were the secret calls her sister was set up with Denbar Mercury with false pretense that she would be getting the show back. That was a lie and broke more than anything. They only were trying to get her there to satisfy an insurance claim so they could obviously replace losses and the money that they were stealing five to 15 mil and they wanted control her sister was trying to get the ultimate control herself and was medical proxy at the time but i guess but her being naive allowed her only to be played and, and once she got back to end why they kicked her sister out and she spiraled worse i was involved at the time blood on a lot of hands okay and so that's what he said now on the comments Someone said he deleted his page. And, um, you know, someone else said blood is on everyone's hands. Someone else said, please read the post because the headline is misleading. Basically, he's saying that the production company was mad at the sister for not sending her back to New York. And it cost them money, which made them give info to the bank, which led to this, which is a mess. Um, someone else says, and that's Jamie, that's me. Shout out to my girl. Kevin is not saying that the sister stole. He's saying that the company stole and was trying to satisfy an insurance claim. I do shake my head. I do. I don't believe this um, headline is accurate. Let me see. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. So, yeah. That is kind of fucked up that the production company would do that. You know what I mean? Like, y'all want to get mad at her sister because she don't want to bring her back to New York and it costs y'all money. First of all, y'all had no business even doing, like, first of all, who, who whose bright idea was it? to even do this documentary in the first place. That's what I'm trying to understand. Like, whose bright idea was it? Like, for real, whose idea was to do this shit? Because to me, it's just like, girl, what? Like, why are we doing this? The fuck? You feel what I'm saying? Like, like get your ass out of here. I don't be more believe that anybody should have been on board with this damn documentary. Wendy's sick as hell. She don't know what the fuck going on. She barely know anybody's names at this point. Probably don't even know hers. And this shit is going on. And, you know, when people, you know, I always say when people get sick or when people die, that's when greedy ass people tend to jump in and go for what they know. And that's some fucked up ass shit to do to somebody. And, you know, like, like I said, the ex, you know, Kevin didn't say that um, her sister was taking advantage of Wendy. 
Um, I don't think so. I, I think that he was really referring to the damn production company and stuff like that. But how the hell does how the hell does one person get fifteen million dollars? One person. How was they even able to get fifteen million dollars? You know what I'm saying? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. It's crazy. But I I do believe that at some point. The, the real truth is going to come out about this. And hopefully the real truth does come out about this because there's so many missing parts. There's so many holes in these stories. And it has so many fingers pointed at so many damn people. And we got to get to the root of the problem. We got to get to the meat and the potatoes of the issue. And that's it. And I'm pretty sure that this Wendy Williams story will continue on and more shit will come out. And hopefully it does. And you guys do know that I will be here to discuss it. Let's 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 do know that. OK, so we're about to move on to the very next topic, and that is Young Miami and academics. OK, DJ Fat Academics, the nigga that I can't stand. So, um, but, you know, the story after this is basically about Diddy and this new accuser. But apparently DJ Academics took um took out the time to go after um, Young Miami in regards to this situation. So he reignited the beef. So academics had a lot to say after the news of Diddy's latest accuser hit the news. And it's important to note that young Miami was not accused of a crime. The lawsuit accuses her cousin of trying to have sex with the accuser, Rodney Jones, not Miami. Okay. So let's get into what academics said, and then we'll be back over here. Let's, 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 let's get, let's get to a little bit of it. Let's get into it. Okay. Oh, no. It ain't even no video. Okay. Let's go back. Okay. So this is what was said. It's young Miami fault that Diddy is back in the news. I told her to shut the fuck up and she wouldn't stop. Now, now look, uh, making claims versus Diddy. Young Miami stay in the whole place and shut the fuck up. You got your sugar Diddy into much problems. And y'all thought I was capping when I said young Miami moving like she the new I don't know how they pronounce. I don't know how to pronounce that. Of the freak offs, imagine fifty niggas coming through the while acting bad on blast in the background. Gross. They even mention Young Miami stupid ass in here. That talk show for show canceled. Now she been running her mouth like Diddy ain't tell her ass to lay low. So I just feel like this. Um, I just need ac academics to shut up, like. For real. Like, regardless of how young Miami might look, he needs to shut the fuck up. Because he always going after a woman all the time. That's all he ever does. All he do is go after a woman. And But yet, when Saucy Santana was coming after his ass, he was sitting up here crying and calling people like Whack 100 who called some other nigga to come and fight him. Like, this shit's stupid. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, you don't never have this energy with no man. You always coming for a woman. And I'm going to need you to stop coming for a woman so damn much. That's why don't nobody give a fuck about what goes down with you. That's why, that's why everybody was laughing at you when you was crying your little ass off about Saucy Santana and the shit that he said. That's why didn't nobody give a fuck about what he said to you. Because you a bitch ass nigga. You always got something to say all the time. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, move on. You ain't saying nothing about Diddy. But you saying something about Miami. But the truth remains to be said that her ass is a little bit quiet at this point. Because ever since, ever since this stuff came out about Diddy and all these accusers and shit like that, I ain't heard a peek from young Miami. So is this shit true? Because she was the one that was arguing with another one of Diddy's girls and said that I did I make you get on your knees and eat my pussy or something she said. So if she said that, then did it have her in a little bit of activity of her own? I'm just saying that's what I take from it. That's what I see. I'm just saying. But okay, but we can move on to the last topic, and that is Diddy. He's a part of yet another lawsuit, okay? So we're about to go ahead and get into it. We got a couple of things to discuss when it comes down to this. So let's get into it. And it's coming from the Neighborhood Talk, honey, and it says, now Rodney Jones is a former producer in a video um videographer for diddy and is alleging that mr combs touched him on multiple occasions diddy will walk around naked and grab jones genitals and fondle his anus and call it horseplay 
Jones claims that he also received multiple advances from others at Diddy's request. According to TMZ, Jones says that he ne that they never had sex, but feels that that's when things were going based on Diddy's actions. He says that Diddy even forced him to watch alleged footage of famed producer Stevie J having intercourse with a man. He claims to have a screenshot of it also. The list of allegations are quite lengthy. It includes being sexually assaulted by a cousin of Young Miami's, prostitutes, drugs, and possible R.A.P.E., and touching and groping and fondling from Cuba Gooden Jr. on Diddy's yacht. He even adds that underage girls were brought to Diddy's home and received alcohol. The documents apparently go on to say that Jones also witnessed a shooting that happened in the studio stemming from a heated argument between Diddy and his son, Justin Combs, okay? He alleges that the sh left someone named G heavily bleeding from the stomach in which Diddy told him to lie to the officers and say that he was in a drive-by. Not only is Rodney suing Diddy, but Justin Combs, additional employees and executives as well, okay? Now, wait a minute now. Wait, wait, wait a minute, honey. Now, he the name uh, CBNS and Justin Combs. Oh, girl. Mm -mm -mm -mm. When I tell you that shit crazy, that shit is motherfucking crazy. Like, I just, I'm one of them people that feel like this. Whatever they said, did he did, he did this shit. He did it. I believe everything. I believe every single word that's coming out of these folks' mouth. I believe it. I believe it. It ain't really nothing else to say about it. I really believe that shit. I do. I believe it. 100% believe it. And anybody who wants to act like there's possibly no truth to this is fucking dumb. Because <laughs> it's true. I don't care what nobody say. I believe it. Now, here's another thing. Now, the male accuser previously accused Diddy of trying to steal his publishing after working on the Love album. Okay? So, let's get into that. Let me put this back up here. Let's get into that. I apologize. To anyone, this video may be embarrassing too. Um, let's just jump right into it. Some of you may know me or may not. I'm a music producer who's a writer and musician. Um, different genres. I started in the gospel and jazz and, and R and B and worked my way over to the hip hop side. I've been working on an album. Um, I took a year off straight working on this album. That album is the love album off the grid by Diddy. Um, and it's Grammy nominated right now as we speak. Um, I should be um, celebrating, but the truth is I'm not. Taking this album on has required so much time, um, you know, months and at, at, at a time, 16 hours, 24 hours a day. Um, sometimes, you know, Diddy would request certain works to be done. I apologize. To anyone, this tell us don't go to sleep until it's done. And and the truth is, we'll be up for days trying to accomplish that. I've tried to get my business straight with them on this album, but the truth is, they're not playing fair. They they hit me on below the belt on so many situations. Just 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 dealing with this. It's, it's the contract that they give me and the offer that they gave me was just disgusting. The the the, the producer fee pennies and on top of that these guys are trying to steal my publishing i can't go for that so i'm fighting back he's a fighter um but i'm 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 gonna put in this fight i gotta do it for myself my rights and most importantly my kids taking my publishing or stealing it is it's just it's i'm not gonna let that happen not gonna let that happen again this is one of those projects that that took so much time from me, I miss and tell us don't go to sleep until it's done. And and the truth is we'll be up for days trying to accomplish that. I've tried to get my business straight with them on this album, but the truth is they're not playing fair. They they hit me on below the belt on so many 
situations just 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 dealing with this is it's the contract that they give me and the offer that they gave me was just disgusting the 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 producer fee days uh with my family just out working on this album at what point i was running around with the the hard drives the computer just to run the ball on this album to finish the production on it and make sure that this album came to you know, a good project with good vibes, you know, just where it is right now. Um, and just to be offered little to no participation in this is highly disrespectful. I won't be that guy 20, 30 years from now, looking back saying, I wish I'd done this. I'm going to do this now. Um, doing this situation is not easy. Taking Puff to court, suing him is not easy. I don't have the 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 monies that it's going to take to fight him in court. So I'm just asking, you know, if you is uh, with my family, just out working on this album. At what point I was running around with the the hard drives, the computer, just to run the ball on this album to finish the production on it and make sure that this album came to, you know, a good project with good vibes, you know, just where it is right now. Um, and just to be offered little to no participation in this is highly disrespectful. I won't be that guy 20, 30 years from now, looking back saying, I wish I'd done this. I'm going to do this now. Um, Doing this situation is not easy. Taking puff. Okay, I run shit. Yeah, nigga. So I, said, I run shit. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Little Rod ain't worth giving this kingdom to if we don't <laughs> control his publishing. I can solve his efforts with three other human beings. He's eating at our table, and I like his backstory, but you need to have other people. It's hard to work with him unless we have his bow. He's a piece of shit human, but we do not need his <laughs> talent unless we can work with him. Yeah. Okay, hey, because I run shit. Yeah. Okay, now, um, Stevie J said, post the whole video. Don't make it seem like you're sitting around joking on you. You didn't produce nine songs on the project. Adding a piano on a song doesn't make you the producer. Adding bass on a song definitely doesn't make you a producer. Tell the whole story on how you came in as an engineer. Don't get selective amnesia and don't try to make the homie look like he's stealing from you because clearly I know that ain't the case. So Rodney responded with, yo, how dare you? My number ain't changed. Speaking of that, your name is next to mine as a producer on Deliver Me and no one else touched that track but me and Jay Dilla. I've never been known of an engineer in this game as long as I've worked. In fact, Mixed by Source is an actual engineer that worked on this album and hasn't been credited as one. I'm confused because if I'm an engineer, why am I credited as a producer? And this video clearly speaks to them plotting on my pub. But what I'm most certain is you're possibly working with them against me. I don't give no fucks about no danger zone. Them threats ain't never work. Hashtag love. So that was basically him organizing a fundraiser so he can get some money to sue um diddy okay so then here we go now it says that diddy's attorney says that the male accuser is looking for a payday okay so let's get into it diddy's attorney sean holly tells tmz that Lil rod is nothing more than a liar who filed a 30 million dollar lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday his reckless name dropping about events that our pure fiction simply didn't happen and is nothing more than a transparent attempt to garner headlines. She adds, we have overwhelming indisputable proof that his claims are complete lies. Our attempts to share this proof with Mr. Jones' attorney, Tyrone Blackburn, have been ignored as Mr. Blackburn refuses to return our calls. We will address these outlandish allegations in court and take all appropriate action against those who make them. All righty then, y'all. So I guess that's it on that one. Okay, so this also came up, and it says that the man suing Diddy for allegedly, as he actually assaulting him, claimed that Diddy made him watch a video of Stevie J having sex with a man, and he provided screenshots in the document, and that man is not Stevie J. It's an adult peace star named Knockout. So when someone um shared that, 
Knockout retweeted it and said, that is not him. It's me. Y'all really be trying it. Okay. Um, what's next? So here are the documents. It says number 69, Mr. Combs used access to J um, Stevie J and his, uh, his knowledge of Mr. Jones, admiration of Stevie J to groom and entice Mr. Jones to engage in homosexuality. Uh, Mr. Combs went so far to share a video of Stevie J anally a Caucasian without a condom. This was done to ease Mr. Jones' anxiety concerning homosexuality. According to Mr. Combs, this is a normal place in the in practice in the industry. Look, even, Stephen J even Stevie J is doing it. Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper, R&B singer, and Stevie J. Mr. Combs promised to make sure that Mr. J Mr. Jones wins producer of the year at the Grammys if he engaged in homosexuality. Number 73, the following screenshots of the video of Stevie J, a Caucasian male, is provided to Mr. Jones. So the dude that was in the video wasn't even Stevie J. So there's a lot that is going on with this. And I don't know what to say, but I do believe that Diddy probably did grope him. And all this other stuff, but I think there's a connect, there's a combination of both. He's trying to get his money because he already tried to get money from him before in regards to production on his album. But I do think that there is some truth to what he's saying about Diddy. Everybody ain't lying on him. Yeah, I know, I know y'all like to think that everybody's lying. But I don't think everybody's lying. But I just want to know what you guys think about that. So, you know, that's really all I got. Um, I know this story probably going to have more moving parts. It's going to continue and stuff. But we're going to get into that later on down the line, okay? So, with that being said, you guys, be sure to support Bando Kane in his current single, DUI. It's available on all streaming platforms for purchase and streaming. So make sure you guys support Bando, because guess what? Y'all know that just my baby daddy. So with that being said, this is your boy, Scotty by Nature TV. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, share this video, and also click on the notification bell so you can be notified whenever a video drops. And if you want to follow me on any form of social media, my Twitter, my Instagram, and my TikTok will be down below in the description box. With that being said, I'll see you guys on the next video, and um, I'll talk to you later. Ciao.